Afternoon, everyone, and good to see you all. Um, I'll try not to be too long, as I'm conscious that, that we're running a little bit behind. Um, I'm going to talk about the Common Platform Programme, um, and I'm, I'm, I'm also hope I'm going to be able to say something about the challenges for policing coming out of that, and, and also what, what I see as the real opportunities there as well. Um, I'm, I would like to say at the outset that I'm a lawyer. I'm not a techie. So this is very much a business perspective um, on the common pl platform rather than a detailed um, technical analysis. <clears throat> okay, um, I'd just like to start a little, saying a little bit about the context behind the common platform programme and, and, and first just to explain something. I'm, I'm going to be talking about policing and the CJS. Um, and when I refer to the CJS, I mean the rest of the CJS without policing. That's not because I don't think that, that, that policing is not part of the of CJS, because I do, but it just makes it easier for me to group all the rest, the, the court, the CPS, the defence, NOMS, etc., all under one banner and call them the CJS. <clears throat> so, just to say something about the context... The, the criminal justice system that, that we have in England and Wales is still very largely a 19th century system. In fact, you, I could argue it's a lot older than that. Our processes are, are very much based on that, and whilst a lot of work has been done to, to modernise them, to try and make them quicker and more efficient, essentially uh, it's still that process. Um, and in particular, we apply exactly the same um, court process to the simplest cases as we do to the more serious cases. So a fair evasion case, for example, uh, until very recently has gone through exactly the same court process as a domestic violence case. Appearances in court, adjudication by three magistrates, maybe several adjournments before the case is finalised. Um, then that's a disproportionate application of resources to those kind of cases. It's, it's not uh, efficient. And what we also know is that Hundreds and thousands of defendants charged with straightforward summary-only offences don't engage with the system at all. They completely ignore everything. And we still apply that same um, CJS process to those cases. <clears throat> um, we've made a great deal of progress in the last few years uh, uh, in digitising the criminal justice system. Uh, but, uh, but I'm... I'm using the term unmanaged to say there hasn't been a single coherent strategy that has delivered that. It's actually been activity at a variety of levels, some local, some national, um, uh, progressing with, with, with different approaches and different systems and different interfaces. We've made a great deal of progress, but we haven't done it in a con completely consolidated and coherent way. Um, and, and the consequence of that, of that is we haven't been able to take the maximum opportunity of that digitization. We don't have the most streamlined digital systems running right from policing and through the CJS. We don't make the most opportunity that modern IT can deliver for that. And, and a good example of that is the extent to which a lot of that digital communication is still email, which requires manual intervention. Um, and a great deal of the multimedia material uh, is still being passed on in the, uh, from the policing to the criminal justice um, system and across the system on, on disks with all the challenges that that presents and all the difficulties of managing it and loss of them uh, and so forth. And of course we're seeing a considerable increase in the use of body worn video and that's going to escalate immensely in the next year or so. You probably, many of you will have read the, the re recent M HMIC report which flagged up, I think the term they actually used was the police services swamped with digital material and that's coming, uh, that's on the railway track coming down to the criminal justice system. We're all going to be completely swamped with that and we'll be paralysed with it all if we don't get the most efficient means of being able to manage that and, and access it and, and share it. It's a, it's a huge opportunity to, u to use that technology to great benefit, but if we don't um, put in place the right systems for managing it and accessing it, it's going to become a, a big issue for us all. <clears throat> 
We all collectively have a single aim out of, out of all this, and that's to get the best digital uh, criminal justice system and for all of us collectively to, to harness the benefits of doing that. But there's only one way that we're going to achieve that, and that is actually by doing it together. And, and that means we've got to work cooperatively, and to achieve that successful cooperative working, it means we all have to be uh, prepared to give a bit and take a bit and, and look to how we can work together to put in that, that best system. <clears throat> OK, so the Common Platform Programme, to say a little bit about that, it's part of the Court Reform Programme, it's the criminal arm of the Court Reform Programme. It's critically a partnership between the Court Service, the CPS and policing, and it has joint SROs. Uh, and, and that is going to be, I think, an important element of uh, taking this all forward successfully. It's got the right constitution at the centre of it uh, to be able to manage that. Um, it's about creating a, that single, common, cross-CJS data store which will hold all the material that the CJS needs to be able to deal with cases or provide access to it. And I'll come on to that a bit more um, in a moment. <clears throat> um, it is a business change programme. It's, it's not purely an IT uh, programme. It is an IT-enabled business change programme. And the whole... Um, principle behind it is to deliver transformational change across the CJS. This is probably the best opportunity we've had in the CJS since the Second World War to do something really significant, not just to introduce the best possible IT and digitisation, but actually to change the business process so that we can harness all the opportunities that that will present. And, and that means redesigning the CJS to be a streamlined and automated system, making maximum use whereof, wherever possible of online activity. And the vision for the programme is to deliver a CJS where court hearings only take place for sentencing and for trials and that all the existing preparatory and case management hearings currently uh, are translated into activity online, uh, save for those exceptional cases where either the public interest or the complexity of the case uh, requires that to be taking place in, in open court. And also for those very straightforward high volume cases for the whole process to be digitised and to take place online so that all the interaction between the defendant and the system is online and that the court, the magistrate and the legal advisor also have a process which supports them to undertake that online. <clears throat> the future uh, court um, model uh, you will all know that currently we have Crown Court and Magistrates Court. The future model under court reform is the three-tier uh, structure. Uh, Crown Court having pretty much the same caseload as the moment. But the single justice tier at the bottom will take all the summary non-imprisonable offences and, and apply the new single justice process introduced in legislation just over a year ago to, to enable those cases to be dealt with outside a courtroom. Um, and provide a fully digitised support for that. They are 850,000 cases a year, in which 80% of the defendants involved don't engage with the process at all. That's a huge um, a caseload, capable of being dealt with much, much more efficiently. That will create capacity in the rest of the system uh, to be able to uh, facilitate the change that, that will take place as we introduce the new business model, but also to enable us to uh, expedite the process um, as against the current um, backlogs that we have in getting cases to trial. <clears throat> So this is an overview of the Common Platform Programme. So, some of you may have seen this previously. The, the large blue centre is, is the platform itself, the, the data store, and the, the means by which uh, we'll access material held in, in police data stores. 
uh, you'll see then the significant difference in the future is that all other CJS users access that material. Nothing gets passed on from one organisation to another. We all share the same material. We all get access to the most up-to-date version of the case and the case material at any one time. Material provided uh, by the police service via the, C the CPS into the platform, accessible by users, and eventually we will build, build portals to enable um, defendants in person, victims and witnesses, and, and citizens, the public, to be able to access information that they're entitled to in relation to cases. Um, I'm not going to dwell too much on this. It's an agile um, um, programme. Uh, we have over 300 staff working in, in Croydon mostly, uh, building the capability, uh, developing the software, and, and those are working in teams all led by criminal justice practitioners, legal advisors, prosecutors, uh, court administrators, defence uh, professionals, so that what is, is developed is driven by business users with years of experience. <clears throat> it's building on case data received from the police via the two-way uh, interface on, on the existing CJS exchange. Uh, and, and that's intentional to try and minimise the, the business change on the policing side at, at this initial stage. Uh, as we go forward, we intend to um, rationalise the, the interfaces between the police service and the CJS. There are a number at the moment. We, we want to move to one single interface, and, and in due course we want to move to the development of modern APIs that can, can replace uh, um, the existing interface. But, but that's um, work to come in the future. And, and in working on, on that interface issue, we're working very closely with the Digital First programme to ensure that, that we develop and share a common view of the right way forward around that. <clears throat> I think one of the critical points out of this slide to make is, is the very last one. We're working in a very complex environment at the moment. Um, the, the criminal justice system itself is very complicated. There are a variety of different IT systems, different interfaces, and at different stages. And are we going to manage the delivery of an agile program which will develop products in small chunks and put them into the business over a period of time? Um, into uh, our business process where our partners are using legacy systems that it's going to be very difficult to, um, to integrate with. So, so this is going to be a challenging environment that we're working with. However, um, we've already uh, secured changes to uh, the criminal procedure rules. There is legislation being developed by the Ministry of Justice to facilitate this and we're working with the Ministry of Justice, Digital First and others around the necessary uh, data and business standards to facilitate this as we go forward. <clears throat> I, three uh, um, elements over the CJS are critical to this being successful. The police service, uh, we recognise that from the outset. There have been police membership of the programme board from the outset and we now have a... a um, a police SRO who is also the um, SRO of the Digital First programme. Uh, the judiciary have been very, very supportive of this initiative. The senior, the senior presiding ju judge also sits on the, the programme board. And we're working extensively with defence practitioners to um, keep them engaged as we go forward and to ensure that we, we develop and deliver products that provide benefit to them and help them to work better so that we know that they will buy into this significant change. <clears throat> but, and some of you may have read in the, in the Times a couple of weeks ago, uh, or heard the senior presiding judge um, uh, talk about the challenges we face in the future um, of this move to online working, uh, we need to address this whole transparency question. We, we, we can't ensure, uh, uh, allow us to move to a situation where what took place in a public environment suddenly becomes secret. And, and so we are working with MOJ policy uh, and, and within the programme to ensure that we can develop solutions that will give 
the public, the citizens and victims and witnesses access to information that they would otherwise have been able easily to get about, about the cases, for example, if they just walked into their local magistrate's court. But, but that will be a challenge. Okay, there are two key elements of the uh, programme. Uh, automated track case management, that's the, the digitisation of the summary non-imprisonable cases. Um, and the second element is core case management, that's all the rest of the criminal cases uh, going forward before magistrates' courts and the um, Crown Court. Um, in particular in relation to core case management, we will be uh, developing and I start, have already started to develop online tools, for, for example, to enable the defence to access by self-service the initial details of the prosecution case um, and in due course to be able to enter pleas online and progress the early stages of cases online without um, having to attend court. <clears throat> The Single Justice Service, ATCM, will, will start a, a pilot early in the new year, uh, probably February time, we're not quite sure yet, with, initially with a Transport for London Fair Evasion cases and then be extended gradually through television licensing, DVLA cases and then to the police motoring cases, which, which is a very large uh, part of, of this work. And that will enable defendants to enter pleas online and, and manage all their interaction with the, with the court process um, online. Um, and it is proposed to bring forward some legislation to permit automated fines for certain uh, classes of cases <coughs> to make the process much more streamlined and, and instantaneous. And, and it's likely that that will be tested initially around um, offences involving uh, uh, fishing um, licences. <clears throat> um, core case management, which is the main um, criminal um, part of the programme, will be delivered into a pilot site um, in the Crown Court, building the process for Crown Court cases initially. Um, that pilot site is Liverpool Crown Court, and the, that piece of work will commence uh, with pre-charge case submission, um, uh, probably in January maybe the middle of January, end of January um, 2017. The delivery of that whole piece of work in the Crown Court is likely to take us um, towards the end of 2018 and thereafter rollout will be uh, into the Magistrates' Court. At this point, I can't give you a clear indication of when that's likely to, be en to end because it, because it depends also on some additional police forces um, implementing the two-way two interface, but it's certainly not going to be before the beginning of 2019. <clears throat> Products have, have already been uh, delivered by the programme. There's a magistrate's court rotor tool, which I think may have been mentioned to you um, this morning. This allows all magistrates to provide their availability and get, and get their court rotors online and has streamlined the process of uh, rotary magistrates to attend court. Uh, there's an online plea process available at the moment whereby defendants can enter pleas to um, straightforward motoring cases. Um, the rest of the process still, still carries on uh, um, as it does now, but, but that's been implemented in almost all the magistrates' courts. Um, and there's a process of digital markup enabling magistrates' courts to result cases directly on, um, online in court and, and that's um, in pilot at the moment due to go to rollout um, early next year. Um, I'm not going to go through these slides in detail because they just um, summarise some of what I've already said. <coughs> um, I've already mentioned um, the importance of the partnership between the Digital First programme and the uh, Common Platform programme. Um, key elements that we're working together on uh, firstly, the approach to multimedia. Uh, we're sharing a project called EDAM, Electronic Direct Access to Multimedia Material, which will um, allow the common platform to receive a URL um, from police system and then automate access direct back to um, that um, item of media, enable it to be viewed in the common platform uh, whilst actually the item is held within a, a police um, repository 
uh, the platform will also enable um, the material to be downloaded if, if into the common platform if it's um, required. And, and that will greatly simplify the process of managing multimedia material, um, as it will not only enable the prosecutor to be able to access that directly, but, but will provide the access required by the court and the defence, um, thus, thus simplifying considerably the challenges we have at the moment in managing this via disks. Um, that, that is a challenge for the, for the policing service in the, that a lot of that capability doesn't exist at the moment to hold material in repositories and um, provide it for access in that way and, and will require some investment. But, but in the long term, that's a considerably enhanced way of managing that material. And we're also working with the Digital First program around the, the continued development of structured data into the platform. Um, and um, we have uh, agreed or worked with them and um, agreed with the National Police Chiefs Council um, a memorandum of understanding around the it, it, business interface between, the, uh, between policing and the, and the programme. <clears throat> and that, that includes uh, provision for the uh, implementation of TWIF across those uh, police forces that currently don't have it. <clears throat> Um, I think I've, I've covered those items and I'm conscious of the clock. Um, I, there are opportunities uh, here for policing as, as, well, as well as the challenge. There's an opportunity to standardise the interface between policing and the, the CJS and to develop the uh, electronic access uh, to multimedia to, to simplify existing processes. In due course, uh, the programme plans to access PNC uh, material directly to uh, make that much easier to access as cases uh, progress. Um, and, and I've mentioned already that we will be looking um, as we go forward to develop appropriate APIs um, to facilitate the ongoing interface between policing and, and the programme. Um, on the basis that, and I think I'm already a minute overrun, uh, on the basis uh, that a picture paints a thousand words, I'm going to close by showing a couple of screenshots uh, from the programme. Uh, these are the screens that we'll be delivering into Merseyside um, uh, for the charging capability at pre-charge stage. This is an example of what a prosecutor will see wh when they open a case. Um, this, this is a, a test screen, it's not, it's not an actual case, so some of the the wording, as you can see, is not, uh, uh, is not correct. And this is an example of how a prosecutor will view a photograph that has been provided um, as part of a, a case submission um, into the platform. And, and the final um, screen, uh, which I, um, I hope nobody in the room yet has had um, cause to access, is the screen that's currently available to um, enable... Um, um, pleas of guilty to motor offences to be entered online. Um, this has been on, in operation for some time and already more than 47,000 defendants have used this facility to enter, enter a guilty plea. Um, and uh, interestingly, what we found as a result of um, making this available is that we've actually seen an increase in guilty, guilty pleas in those cases. Um, which is, uh, I think, an interesting reflection on the, um, the willingness of the public to get involved in online activity in the CJS. Uh, thank you very much. I'm happy to try and answer any questions.